Let's have a look at this limit. It says as x approaches 1, we have this uh, massive undetermined form, of course. So remember, n stays, stays fixed, right? x is approaching 1. So we have 0 at the bottom, and also 0 times 0 times 0, so undetermined. So one way is to think about maybe we can use L'Hopital's rule, right, 0 over 0. But in this case, it's too complicated. I wouldn't even try that. Right, if, if, if you want to uh, have a try, yeah, you can go ahead, but I wouldn't. So in this case, in this case, maybe I can use the, uh, this, this identity. So I call it so a to the power of n minus b to the power of n. n is some natural number. That is equal to a minus b. Right, we have this formula times a to the power of n minus 1 plus a to the power of n minus 2 times b. So every time we have the power of a just keeps uh, decreasing and then we have the power of b just keeps increasing. So uh, finally we have a to the power of a times b to the power of n minus 2 plus b to the power of n minus 1. So using this formula I'm going to treat First, I'm going to rewrite this limit. So this limit x approaches 1, f of x. Right? So this is my f of x. I'm going to rewrite it into, into right, the bottom stays the same, but the top is going to be a right, it's going to finite product. K from goes from 2 all the way up to n of 1 minus x to the power of uh, 1 over k. Right? So cubic root means just 1 over 3, right? n through to 1 over n. So in general, y over 1 over k. k goes from 2 all the way up to n. So in this case, I'm going to treat 1 as a. Right? I'm going to treat b as x to the power of 1 over k. Right, so in, in this case, so in general, I'm going to use 1 to the power of k minus x to the power of 1 over k. Right, this is my b, right? So to the power of k. Right, k is just like my n in this case, natural number. So that is equal to, like I said, a1 minus b, that is 1 minus x to the power of 1 over k. Right. Times, so a to the power of, so that's 1. Right. Plus, still 1, 1 times b, b is my x to the power of 1 over k. Right. Next, it's obviously x to the power of 2 over k. Like I said, b power just in, keeps increasing by 1 each time, right? So 1, 2, 3 over k, so on and so forth, until x to the power of it's n minus 1. Here's n, so here's k. So I have k minus 1 over k, the last term. So again, according to this formula, I can just replace, I can just multiply multiply this expression by this, right? Then I'm going to have to multiply by the same thing at the bottom. So in this case, the function would be equal to, first of all, product k from 2 to n to, to n, like I said, multiply together. Multiply this by that into the into a product. I have this identity, right? So basically, I have just one minus x, right? The k and one over k cancel out. One minus x, right? In this infinite, right? So there's no more k, but I'm still gonna have to multiply everything out together, right? In the end, but here I have multiplied the same thing at the bottom, right? But when I multiplied, I multiplied inside this finite product, right? Which means I have to uh, still multiply not just only this expression, but multiply the whole product, right? So.
So 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1, the whole finite product k from 2 to n of this part. Right? 1 plus x to the 1 over k plus x to the 2 over k all the way x to the k minus 1 over k. And this is the... Uh, right. So like I said, the top, even though there's no k, right? but still I'm going to have to multiply how many times, right? n minus 2 plus 1, n minus 1 many times, right? Every term is this term. So this term raised to the power of n minus 1 in the end. So like I said, the top will just turn into 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1. So in that case, I have I have them canceled out. Right? In the end, I have this. So eventually, it's going to approach as x approaches the, this time it's no longer undetermined, right? This time we can just replace x with one, right? Into every term in here. So, so what do I have? Right, the top becomes one, the bottom becomes finite product from two to n of one plus one plus. Right, how many ones in here? Right? 1 all the way up to k minus 1. That's k minus 1 terms. But here's one more term. So k terms. So k ones. Right? So that is just 1 over finite product from 2 to n of just k. Right? So k, like, so this is, like I said, right? so we're told to multiply. Uh, so 2 multiplied by 3 all the way up to n, right? that is just 1 over n factorial. But if you say, okay, how do I remember that you know, complex formula, that a to the power n minus b to the power n, right? that, that's too technical. How on earth uh, would I remember that? But there is a Taylor expansion you can also use. Remember, your best friend Taylor, right? Taylor expansion. Very powerful. So we can use 1 minus, if it's 1 minus x to the power of 1 over k. Right, if, it's, if it's x is approaching 1, right, then we can simply just say that is 1 minus, since x is approaching 1, which means I can rewrite x into 1 minus 1 minus x. And the same thing, 1 minus 1, right, 0 still plus x, right, whole thing to the power of 1 over k, right, since x is approaching 1, so which means 1 minus x has to, has to approach 0, <coughs> right, so, uh, so basically now we can, we can, yeah, so the whole quantity, right, whole quantity raised to the power of 1 over k, right, so which means Taylor expansion, right, we can, so 1 plus this negative thing, right? This negative thing approaching 0, right? Nearby point 0. Power is 1 over k, right? Binomial ex Taylor expansion, right? So that is equal to 1 minus uh, first term Taylor expansion. Taylor expansion with piano remainder. First term 1. Second term, we have minus power times this term. This term, one minus, right? the whole the whole term the whole term times the power. That's our second term. And so, little o plus little o, one minus x. Right, so little o is just a. In this case, you can treat it as a function that's approaching zero, right, as x approaches one. So this function doesn't have to be unique. Right, it can be some function that's approaching zero. So in that case, that case, this is what I have. Right. So one minus one, zero, and I have a negative, negative, positive. Right? So one minus x over k. I still have little o of 
one minus x. And so x approach <coughs> approaches one. So in that case, the the function function top becomes still finite product. Okay, it goes from two to n of Previously, it was 1 minus x to the power of 1 minus x to the power of 1 over k, right? That's the general term. Now it's turned into this, right? So all I have to write is uh, 1 over x over k plus little o of 1 minus x. Right? So this is my general expression. And the bottom, 1 minus x to the power n minus 1. So it's easily verifiable that the top product can be multiplied all the way out, right? Um, can be can be multiplied out to become just finite product still finite product, 1 minus x over k. And we have plus little o of 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1. So I'm, I'm not going to go into details of how, why this is the case, but this is easily verifiable. Just remember, little o means a some function approaching 0 as x approaches 1. So if you expand everything out, everything out, and multiply everything out, use mathematical induction. I'm not going to go into details, but in the end, this is uh, factually true. Right, so, so this finite product plus little o of 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1. And so remember, it means just some sequence approaching 0 times this expression. So this time, this time I should have, remember, this finite product, right? This final becomes 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1. And we have the k goes from 2 to n multiply all together. That is n factorial, right? Since we have, we have n minus 1 many terms, x, 1 minus x, right? Always 1 minus x, multiply n minus 1 many times, and plus little o of 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1. 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1. That is equal to. So this and this can just simplify out. 1 over n fact factorial plus little o of this and this can just cancel. Little o of 1. Little o just means some function approaching 0 as x approaches 1. So this automatically approaches 0 as x approaches 1. So really, same, same answer.